Can you spell sustainability? <laughs> sustainability. S U S T A I. S U S T. I have no idea. I can only spell microscope. S U S T A I N A B I L I T Y. Sustainability really permeates every action that we have in life and is very involved in schools, which are often the front line of a number of our initiatives. New York City Public Schools started a sustainability program several years ago with a system-wide sustainability director. But the really important part is that in each school, there is a teacher who has stepped up and volunteered and said, hey, I want to lead these efforts in my own school. And each of them is doing it in different ways, the ways that suit the children and the environment in that school. So they're developing. In some cases, it's composting programs. In other cases, it's ways to reduce the energy used there. So it's a really important program for us because it touches so many people in the schools. The sustainability coordinator in the New York City schools, their job is to set up a recycling program for the school and to monitor compliance with those recycling laws and also to look at the energy usage in the building and to try to reduce the energy consumption. Thanks so much, Scott. I learned more about recycling and how to help our environment. And when I see that somebody's doing something wrong, like putting bottles in trash bins, I actually pick it up and put it in the right bin, you know? And I also take that home and I teach my parents, my family members, and my friends the right thing to do to help our environment. So the students in the recycling club decided the best way to instruct the 6th and 7th graders on how to recycle is to make a video. Being a sustainability coordinator may seem like a daunting task, and at times it is a challenge, but ultimately, once the program is in place, and you have the signage in place, you have the bins, and you have that core group of students working for you, it becomes second nature. It becomes part of your day and part of your week. I've always had a passion for sustainability. I've always incorporated these things into my teaching whenever I could. And so when the sustainability coordinator position came available, it seemed like I was the right person to do that. We learned today that our recyclables go on a barge to Staten Island to Pratt Industries where they can turn it back into cardboard papers. Now that there are so many resources behind this, I'm getting a lot more support in my classroom and I'm able to develop it at a different level. With the way that things are moving, with our integrated curriculum and bringing in the sustainable examples and having the partnerships, it helps it flourish. We face enormous challenges on the local level, on the global level, related to climate change and enhancing sustainability. I, I do find now as a, a fairly recent parent, I have a three and a half year old and a one and a half year old, uh, I am optimistic about the future. I had to be taught how to recycle and learn it. It was not something I grew up with. I didn't think about turning off the light switch. I didn't think about turning off the water and what that meant for the environment and finite resources. I now see my three and a half year old as my wife puts things in the garbage that she thinks are recycling or aren't recycling. For him, it's, it's not something he needed to learn. He often runs in and says, no, the pizza box goes in the recycling bin. And he just knows this. This is just something he grows up with. It goes into the green bin or as we evolve and as it becomes more mainstreamed uh, into what we do, uh, I'm optimistic that these lessons are not so hard to be taught, that the young generation that are the ones who, again, are inheriting the city understand their responsibility and their role in this work. That's right, Julia. I'm so proud of you. I remember everyone. There's only one earth. Keep it clean and tidy. The New York City Department of Education is 1.1 million students. That's a tremendous amount of people in a very unique position that we're in to be able to make an impact, not just in New York City, but across the country and around the world. Almost one in 300 Americans is currently a New York City public school student. Think about that. Think about the difference that you could make if you could take messages, these messages that are so important, and get those across to these 1.1 million kids. And then they take that home into their communities. And whatever they're learning here is what they're going to learn for the rest of their life. It's that important. I to the E to the side.
cycle. Green to the bin to the paper. R to the E to the cycle. Groovy bottle, everybody follow. In this building, people know me for my music a lot. So I figured that I would try to put um, my love for music in with this new passion of mine, recycling. After writing the song, I saw a huge change. Everybody like loved the song in the building and they would sing it around and I would see people like going to the, like they would randomly pick a paper to go to the garbage and sing the song and throw it. So I knew that it had an impact on people. Can anybody tell me, what do you think is the material that you have the most of in your classroom? Paper, exactly. We have trash troopers, two volunteers from every class. For the last couple of years, I've been training them every month to talk about the recycling program in the class in the cafeteria. They're supposed to be sort of the captains for their class so that the other kids know who they are. If they have any questions, they ask them. If the teacher has any questions, the teacher should ask them. And the little kids in particular are so enthusiastic and so zealous about this program. They are just our best recycling ambassadors that you could have. Everybody has rolls of paper towels in their classroom, and when you finish using the paper towels, where does this go? In the recycling bin. What color? Green. In the green bucket. If you have white paper, lined paper, where does it go? In the, which color? More than just where you put something, you really have to shift a culture and change a mindset in a group of people. So I wanted to see where this was working well. And I did a lot of research, reaching out to other schools, going around my building. I actually got like five different teachers on board to start recycling first to see like what were some of the pitfalls going to be. Also built relationships with the custodians to try to make sure that like if we're sorting in the classrooms, then we have to make sure that what's sorted is actually collected and then brought to the recycling truck. My people will bag it, separate it, and place it appropriately at the curb. I can't control what the children do, that we need administrative or parent volunteer input in socializing the children to dispose of the, the waste correctly. There are rules for recycling set up in your classroom. When we go into the room, we're going to give them their new bin. Paper only, right? That's pretty easy. There's two other bins in most rooms now. There's a black or gray bin for garbage, and then there's a blue bin. And we're going to add some signs. The other big rule that we're going to tell all our classes is that these bins should be together in the same place every day. Do you guys at home in your kitchen where your trash and recycling is, is it in the same place every day? Yeah. Right, it doesn't move around your kitchen, right? <laughs> so why should it move around the classroom? So keep it in the same place every day. That's how we develop habits. This is the way that it should be. We should have paper, we should be separating our garbage. In the classroom. I'm really proud of the kids today because they took information that they learned and they applied it. And they're really working to make change in our school around recycling and sustainability issues. You see kids going into classrooms as peer educators. And that's what we want. We want the kids spreading the message and teaching everyone else so that the behaviors can change and we can have a greener school. As time goes on, they form a bond with taking care of the environment. They feel empowered, they feel powerful, they feel that they're making a difference in their world. Over the past few months, our class has been selected to be part of the green team. We focus on recycling and reducing a lot of the waste as a school. So what we've done is every Thursday we collect the boxes of recycling and as a classroom we're responsible for making sure that all of the boxes are recycled instead of thrown away. Get the students engaged in why recycling is important and make it a part of the class learning. It's part of rituals and routines that children should know. I think it's very beneficial. This is a week worth of paper. The important about recycling is not, we won't see it today, but we'll see it 50 to 100 years from now. Maybe I'm not gonna be around that time, but they're gonna be around and their kids and their grandchildren will be also around to benefit from this movement. The kids are really enjoying learning this way, but more than enjoying learning, they connect to it. They connect to it in their everyday lives. Recycle Forever by Kelly Miranda, that's me. Recycle, recycle, fun to do. Recycling can help the earth thanks to you. Together we can change the world. Every step can help. Any little effort that someone takes, it can create a big ripple effect. So like they say, a pebble in the water creates a wave and you never know where that reaches. 